What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. Today, we're talking stairs. Now, I've jumped a lot of stairs. I've built a lot of stairs. So I'd like to think of myself as somebody who knows a good bit about them. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you how I built this last staircase on the deck I was just building. So this is kind of part two in that series of breaking up the deck uh, build into more uh, cohesive sections that are more in depth. Uh, so if you guys are interested in that, stick around and let's show you what I did. This is going to be my fairly comprehensive guide on how I build stairs in an exterior setting off a deck. So there's a million different ways you can go about doing this. Um, as long as it gets the job done as, and is within the parameters of what defines a walkable stair set, usually you're pretty good. I like to overbuild everything I do just so I don't have to do it again. So this is how I go about doing it. First, I'll start out with my finished surface. If you're not done with your framing yet, make sure you put something to establish that height and where that final grade is going to be. Um, in this case, it's going to be on the decking boards here. I take either a piece of wood like this, or sometimes if it's a really long run and I don't have a board or it's going to be awkward, I'll take a string and run that out. You always want to level out from that as far as you think you're going to go for this finish height. I like to go off of the, the uh, rise as opposed to the run because most of the time the rise is more where my constraint is compared to the run. Um, you can't do both because something has to be flexible within that equation. So I usually go off of the rise because in an exterior setting, usually you can always dig down or build up more or less within that, that little bit of a range to establish it to where it needs to be. So first things first, like I said, we, we run this board out level and then we're gonna measure straight down from this furthest point where I believe I want the stairs to end, roughly. One thing that's good to note is that um, if, you're, if you're finishing on a hill and it's sloping perpendicular to the, the run of your stairs, um, I usually try and start from the highest point, uh, measure down, and then sometimes I'll end up kind of adjusting to that middle uh, just to kind of make it to where you're not gonna have just like a huge step up on one side or the other, because somewhere it has to be, you have to have something that's your constant. Um, and you don't wanna start from that lowest point because you don't wanna be digging down on the highest point to where your stairs are below grade. And you don't wanna have a huge variation in, in height from the lowest part of your grade. So I usually will start from the highest point, do my test cut, and then kind of adjust from there. If it's not a huge, variance from one side to the other then we kind of just go with that average but for this one we think we're looking at 30 and a half if i'm not mistaken yep 30 and a half right there so we'll measure to the underside of this board because that's flush and level with the finish height of our deck kind of find a spot there 30 and a half and that's just going to kind of give us our rough rise um, with stairs you really kind of have to be fluid and kind of adjust as needed so we're gonna go with that 30 and a half rise. So once we have our rise established, we go, I, there's a couple different ways you can kind of figure out the math on this. You can do it, you know, the traditional sense and just do the math, writing it out. You know, you know you have, a lot of times we would do nine and three quarters on our uh, tread width, uh, cause that's roughly what it would be with the two decking boards and an overhang. So you have that as a constant, you put that in with your run and then you can come up with what each one of the rises need to be um, but to make it a lot easier on yourself they have tools for this you can either get a construction calculator from a big box store online they have ones for apps on your phone that's the one i use a lot if you don't have access to that you can go to dex.com they have a tool for uh, figuring out your stair stringers on there i've used that quite a bit sometimes if i'm having trouble with the construction calculator before i kind of knew how to use it as well as i do now uh, that's a really useful tool. So what we are going to do on this one is a little bit different than the average staircase because I really wanted, they have an elderly dog. Um, this is a pretty low deck and there's not a ton of stairs. So I kind of wanted to make it more of like a leisurely walk up and as opposed to, you know, something that like feels like you're climbing a staircase. Now we don't want something that's 
two pace treads or even a pace and a half tread. You want it to be still within that single pace on each tread. Um, but so I went ahead and did a 14 inch tread on this one, which is as wide as I'll, I'll ever go probably. And then usually I stay within that seven inch rise on them because that's a pretty decent step. But like I said, I wanted this one to be more leisurely. So we went with about a six and a half, I believe. I'll have to double check that, but it was in the six range. And then, yeah, so that ended up with us having five rises. So then you can kind of adjust within that, but a good rule of thumb, if you're doing um, decking boards, nine and three quarters on the treads, and usually try and stay within that seven inch rise if you can. If it gets higher to like eight, like seven and three quarters is the max you can do by code. The closer you get to that, it feels like you're climbing a mountain. So you really wanna not do that and not feel like you're climbing a super steep staircase. You don't, nobody wants that. So yeah, we're going with a pretty mellow one on this one. I'm gonna show you how to lay out the stringers now. So to lay out and cut the stringers, you're gonna need a few things. First and foremost, you're gonna need a framing square. Any kind will work as long as it's got a perfect 90 and it's straight. You're going to need some framing jigs, uh, which I use these squid jig ones here. I really like them. They're a little bit beefier and thicker. So if you have rougher edged material, the little ones you get from the box store, just, I mean, they're not as good. And also you can use these to, to do rips and all sorts of fun stuff. So they're worth buying. You need a good pencil, a circular saw, and a jigsaw. That's all you're going to need to lay this out and cut it. So let's show you how to lay this out now that we have the values for the tread width and the riser heights. Okay, so once we get our values figured out, we're gonna go ahead and set these, these jigs where they need to be. We've got this one here at six and a half on the inside edge, this one at 14 on the outside or the inside edge there. We're gonna take this, we're gonna butt it up to the edge of the board. You wanna kinda try and bring it this way as much as possible so we'd waste as little material as possible in the process. And we're gonna go ahead and take this pencil here and we're gonna strike that first tread here. Now, to establish this back foot here, we're gonna go ahead and take this as well and mark the rise, even though this won't be a rise for the stair set, it will establish the line that, that sets up this back line here. And then you wanna take it, slide it down Make sure you line up that value directly with your line as much as possible. So about there, once you have that value lined up, strike again for your first rise and repeat. You just do that all the way down till you get to the number of heights. So if, what I like to do a lot of times is I'll mark right here, number one. I know that I need five, so I need to do that four more times after number one. Continue down. Line up the value, strike it, and repeat. This is number two. And there you go. Just continue that throughout the whole board, and then that'll establish each one of those cuts. So to show you kind of how we finish off, because this is just an example, I've already got my first one cut here, but this one's just kind of an example to show you how to do it. We'll take this last one here, do it again for the rise. This is gonna be our last rise. And then we'll come back. We're gonna mark an inch off the bottom here. Cause whenever you're doing stairs, the last step always needs to have an inch subtracted off the rise because each one of these is going to have, each one of these is going to have decking boards on it, adding that inch besides this bottom one. This bottom one is gonna rest. So you'll end up with six inches here or if you weren't to subtract that, you would end up with a seven and a half inch rise because it'd be adding the decking board up here plus that extra inch that's not gonna land on a decking board, if that makes sense. So then also, you got that established there. You don't wanna change this value because it'll change the pitch. So you always just come back that inch and mark the inch. So now that we kind of have all of that figured out, we'll take our jigs off. And we're gonna take this square, we're gonna line it up with this edge on this first, or this last rise here. We're gonna put it like that so it's nice and flush. We know that's at a 90 degree angle. And we're gonna strike that backwards. And that's gonna establish that bottom foot of the tread. I'm sorry, of the stringer. 
That's going to establish the bottom of your stringer, just like that. We'll come back up to the top. And you remember this line here that we had done initially? Same deal. We're going to put the framing square up against the edge of the first uh, tread, lining it up with this here as good as you can. And then that's going to establish. Now that's going to establish the back end of your stringer. That's going to make contact with your rim board or whatever you're fix whatever you're fixing it with. Now, that's your basic stringer layout. That's that's how you can do it and just be perfectly fine. Now, this is where I'm going to do what I like to do that's a little bit more advanced. So each time I make a, a set of stairs, I will add a front board here. Usually whatever width this is, I'll get, you know, in this case it's six and a half. Can't use a two by six, so I'll take two by eight, rip it to six and a half exactly, and then that will span each one of these bays on the front edge of this board. So that will build it out that extra inch and a half that you have for that board's width. So that would make your staircase an inch and a half wider. But it's not a big deal because if you do it on each one, guess what? This one's going to be added an inch and a half here. So it'll offset the inch and a half here. But the only thing that does leave is you'll be left with this top stair being too long. So you have to come up here and take an inch and a half off this back stringer here. And then that will then establish this one the same width as the rest of them. Now also, another thing I like to do is I like to put a board that runs along the back to also act as that and give me something nice to fasten to the band. So that's another inch and a half you have to take off of this right here, right? So then you've got your first inch and a half, we'll call it there. That will be the thickness to offset this front thickness. And then we'll add another inch and a half or subtract another inch and a half here because there's gonna be a board that runs back here. May seem a little confusing the way I'm describing it, but when it all comes together, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you've got your first stringer cut out. What you're gonna do is you always, always, always use this as a template. You don't wanna go through and lay out each one the way I just described it to you. You wanna take the one that has all of your uh, parameters on it, and you wanna lay that on the next board, trace it out, and then cut that exactly every single time. Um, you'll end up with variances, a little bit of differences. This will be way more consistent this way. So we'll take this stringer we already cut. We'll kind of put this, you know, you want the most important part is a lot of times there is variance in thicknesses of these. The most important part when you're laying these out is you want to make sure this back edge is flush here. That's the most important. It doesn't really matter as much if this nose here meets where it's supposed to. Um, because when you go to cut that later and we put that front board on, it'll fix any of that variances. The most important part is having that back heel where it needs to be. So we'll flush that out. Like so. Flush it out. And then we'll come through and strike on each one of these and come through and establish each one of those and that'll give us our next stringer to cut. And then you repeat that throughout however many you're gonna need. So how do you figure out how many you're gonna need? Let's get to that next. Another thing I almost forgot that I have started doing recently to the stairs that I really, really think adds a lot of life to them is, so we've taken on this last step, we've taken an inch off, right? Because each one of these is going to have the decking boards besides the bottom one's not going to land on the decking board. So we want this to end at six and a half. To do that, for it to not be seven and a half, we subtract the inch, correct? So what I've been liking doing lately is taking a piece of composite board because we used to build a lot of composite decks. I have a bunch of this scrap sitting around because I just can't get rid of anything. So if you have access to something like this, this is also something really nice to do. I'll take this extra inch thickness from this. And I'm going to subtract it from each one of the bottoms of these stringers again another inch taken off of this and we're going to replace that with this so when it's resting when it's resting on the concrete pad that we're going to set it up on it's not resting with an open grain where water is just absorbing into this constantly this composite decking does not absorb water nearly as much 
as wood does so it may seem like an unnecessary step but i like to do it now uh, just when i have the extra material and i have the extra time to put into it i will take this and put it here so that's what we're going to do so this is where your jigsaw comes into place you know you want to do your cut till you get to the end but since it's a circular saw it's not going to finish that cut out so you come back with the jigsaw and finish each one of these cuts you never want to overcut to get that to pop off because you're going to lose strength in the stringer over time so it's better to undercut and then come back and finish with a jigsaw okay so you got all your stringers cut now you're ready to assemble your stairs but before you do that it's a good idea if you're going to i like to uh, put a concrete pad for it to land on just so it's not on dirt it doesn't move it's uh, on a surface that sheds water as opposed to absorbing it and rotting out your stringers. Although it is okay, I have done it when you just have the um, composite board on the bottom and it's just resting on the ground if somebody doesn't want you to do that or if you end up not wanting to do that yourself. Um, it seems to work pretty good. It may settle a little bit over time, but it at least won't rot that way. So we're going to get our concrete pad figured out. And by doing that, you kind of just like rough fit your stringer, see where it's gonna land, mark a level line, and kind of like dig out and do your form. And then have, make sure you check it a bunch of times, make sure it's the same length back to your band board, and then test fit your stringer a couple places, make sure it's gonna be where you want it to be, and then pour it. So let me show you what I got set up here. Okay, so it was quite a bit more digging than I was expecting, but here you go. We got our, our form figured out here. Test fit the stringer from there down to there. Made sure it was at the height you wanted it to be. Kind of start from your low end, work your way back uphill. Make sure you're level where you want that stringer to land all the way across. With this one, I, ha I had like a twisted two by four I was trying to use the form for, um, and I couldn't get it to straighten out. So I ended up having to rip a board, or to actually rip two boards to accommodate to make it actually level all the way around not a big deal but yeah this is what we ended up with i've got some bars in there to help stabilize it and now we just gotta pour it all right so this is what the framing for the stairs look like when i bring all the stringers together connect them all the way i want to we doubled this outer one right here because that's where our handrail system is going to connect to. There won't be a handrail on that side. I like to double it when it's on the handrail side, just so it's a little bit sturdier. We are going to have to come through and do some blocking to accommodate for the decking pattern I'm going to do on the tops of these. But this is about where it needs to be before we set it, because, I mean, it's already pretty heavy right now. But as you can see, this is what I was kind of describing before. Took that extra off the back. So now there's a board here. So you're not toenailing through your stringers. A lot of times that cracks them going into your band. So it's nice to have something sturdy like this. Um, and then each one of these fronts here, like I talked about, ripped to six and a half inches. It looks pretty cool. Definitely like the elongatedness and the mellowness of these stairs. I can't wait to get them hung up. Also, we got our concrete poured, so that's prepped and ready. All we gotta do is wait for that to set up. We'll take that uh, pre-assembled stair set, and it'll set right in place. And then we just fasten it to that band, and it'll be ready, ready for decking, basically, at that point, so. All right, there's all the blocking for the stairs. All done, that's officially all the framing I'm gonna do on it. Got all the ingrains treated. And all the pieces for the, the treads themselves are all cut. We've got the first test one put together there. I'll still have to rip a piece to go there. And then I'm gonna have a board wrap the riser and it'll turn and then go that way also to kind of match how the the fascia board's going to be. If you guys hung out through all that, thank you so much. 
Uh, it might have been a little dry for some. Uh, hopefully you learned a thing or two and it wasn't too boring and it was put together in a way that you actually understood what I was trying to get across. So if you did enjoy it, please leave a like, uh, leave a comment if you got something to say, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.